Hello, everyone, and welcome to Selling the Dream, our podcast. This is round two. Had some technical difficulties this morning, but we powered through and we're committed to making sure we get this episode off without a hitch. And I'm going to first introduce, well, first of all, I'm Ken Jordan, and I'm going to introduce Joe Ardell, co-host, California kid. No, man, Delco kid. I live in California. I don't know, man. It's been a long time, Joe. Been a long time. All right, dude. I was I was out in California two weeks ago to visit to visit with Joe and the family. Thank you again for all your hospitality. Yes, sir. And still still can cook still can cook a little bit, Joe. I was pretty impressed. Necessity breeds invention. So glad you liked it. The only thing I didn't get was in, I didn't get any lobster. No, I didn't get to eat any. So so let me start. Let me start with this story. So so I'm in California, and Joe says. We're going to go lobster diving. For those of you who don't know, in California, they don't have claws. So you just go out in the ocean, you dive down, you pick them up, and you eat them. Apparently, it was supposed to be that simple, right? That's the way it was presented to that, us. Yes. It was pretty that simple. So you got to go at night, though. You got to go at night. Can't lobster dive during the day. So, so nighttime comes. We're all geared up. He had a wetsuit that actually fit me, which... Oh, <laughs> I was like, that was pretty, pretty good. <laughs> to be fair, it was three pieced together, but all right, go ahead. You know? We I was like, wow, well, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a that's So can we get in the ocean? I got flippers on, up the wet suit, got the gut, got the flag flight, and he got him back into the ocean. Like, this was the one hit that Joe gave is he got him back into the ocean. Okay. Check. I can do that. And then. We get about right about where the waves are crashing. And that's when all hell broke loose. You know, it's supposed to be with it just back into the waves. And before you know it, we lost our diving. And I'm like getting pummeled, Joe, pummeled by these waves. I, I'm choking all the ocean water. It's it freezing. <laughs> I dropped my flashlight. And Jeez. that's it. I checked out. I think it was in there for all of about, what, three, four minutes? Yeah. The ocean has a way of, of purging things that don't belong there. So. It, I guess that's it, man. Spit me right out. It and was... Liam, my, my son, said that was a classic Joe undersell. <laughs> but... You know, man. Well, there was a couple things on the checklist that you, you might have not heard or missed, but that's okay. We, I, I applaud you for your galleon effort to even get in the ocean in the middle of the night. You know, notoriously sharky kind of beach break right there. I was pretty, I didn't tell you about that, but that was pretty good, man. It was a good time though. I enjoyed being out there. I enjoyed the the, the weather was nice. It wasn't wasn't hot by any means, but it was certainly better than what we had here. I think we had broke a record for one of the coldest days of the year back here when we were out in California. And it was just, you know, just a reminder that I feel like in the West Coast they move a little slower on purpose. Like they just don't seem to have the same level of urgency as the the people on the East Coast, and yet there's there's millionaires out there, you know, walking around in flip flops and, you know, drinking drinking coffee, and you, you you never know it. And it was just a nice reminder that you know you don't always have to be running around like your hair's on fire, you know. You can slow down a little bit and still accomplish everything you want to accomplish and be successful and and all that stuff. And I think I needed that reminder at that point. We had fun. Yeah, I definitely found that after moving out here that you know you move with intent. So a lot of stuff on the East Coast that I found and working in offices and stuff, everybody works hard for show. You know, you get in the office at five in the morning and you leave at nine. And what do you really do between five and nine that takes you that long that, you know, when you figure out how to be more efficient, you have a lot to do cool stuff. So that's, I feel like out here, they, they kind of have it dialed, but on the flip side of that, pretty, people are pretty, pretty laxed out here and. You know, I kind of feel like a shark in a goldfish tank sometimes because, you know, the little things show up on time and do all this. So, you know, it's kind of it doesn't happen. So we can get that. It's the best was AJ when I was, I, I was, I was messing with him and he was putting his hands up. I said, AJ, you don't want any of this, man. You don't want this smoke. And he goes, Hey, hey, don't forget. I got East Coast blood in me. <laughs> 11 years old. That's right. Great. That's you know, right. Teaching them right. So. I'm not going to spend too much time on the Eagles, Joe. We were robbed. The football world was robbed of what would have been the best Super Bowl ever. Let's just got to see every, that. Got to root for the Eagles every single game of the football season this year. So, yeah. And we're with her. We got, 
we got to take take it with a, with with appreciation and and see what next year brings. You know, sir. I can't wait to introduce our guest today. Fordyce is a gentleman who I've met a couple of years ago, and and has he's just an amazing amazing guy, and he's helped so many people in his career. And you know, when you're talking to Ed and and when you see him on social media, you just know that he's just passionate. He's passionate about everything he does. You know, reminds me a lot. Like I, he, he just reminds me like Pat Croce. Remember Pat Croce from the Sixers? Funny because I that's, that's, second. That's the like, that's that's what I think of when I think of Ed. She vibe. You know, did the whole move to Florida thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Ed, how are you, man? Doing great, Ken. Great to see you, Joe. It's awesome to be hanging sure. out with you guys. Now I gotta. Quick, funny Pat Croce story years ago uh, in my restaurant days, right after his motorcycle accident, I see him passing the window, right? Actually, I didn't know it was him. I just saw somebody on crutches and I opened the door and Pat Croce looked up at me just before I went gray and just looked up at me on his crutches and he goes, hey, you look like me. And I was like, come on in. You like craft cakes? He's like, I love craft cakes. (laughs) Yeah, we and I used to see him when I was in Ocean City. He would go to the Sarah calls. The real deal, man. But thank you for the compliment. Hey, tell us a little bit. Just give us a quick background on on you and your professional career, and and kind of what guided you towards where you're at today, which is, you know, passion for helping people and 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 achieve things that they didn't think are possible. Yeah, cool. So I guess just real quick, I was in the restaurant business. And, and knew I had to make, you know, make some changes. So what do we do? I knew I was unqualified for anything else. So what do we do? We get our real estate license, right? So 2004, <laughs> get my real estate license, you know, in 30 months, blow it, you know, out of the water. And I got bored and was like, all right, what, what's, what's next for me? And at the time I was with a traditional company and said, Hey, I, I know I got this thing down. I just, you know, I know how to do this. I want to teach people. I want to blow the business up. And at the same time, I had just done my first Anthony Robbins event in 2004 in the Meadowlands. So I'm on fire, man. Like I'm newly sober and I'm doing this Anthony Robbins stuff and I'm a top agent in Chester County. And, and they said, well, you could manage one of our offices. And I said, I can't manage my sock floor. There's no way I can manage and at the time, there was a new franchise in town, and they went, oh, my gosh, somebody with great energy and can't pay attention to details. That's the exact job description I hand the guy. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm qualified for something. Went there, annihilated the, the market, literally went from number three in Chester County to number one within three years, producing our close producer three to one. And, and I'll loop back to how this whole thing worked out. But we ended up being ranked number eight in the United States of America out of all real estate offices from all companies. It was wild. Wow. And, you know, my, my passion started when I made a change in my life in 2003. Um, you know, I was out of control, man, with drinking and drugs and, and thank God I was blessed with the gift of sobriety. And when I went to speak Tony Robbins in 2004, I was like, I can do that. Like I, I can do that. And it started this like great, like when I talk about it, I get like choked up like this, this insatiable hunger to help people, to transform people, to help them pull out the greatness that's already in them. So that's the way that I built one of the best little real estate franchises in Chester County, PA is Start from the inside out. I started with hydration, dreams, goal, helping agents work in their natural strength zone that's God given or whatever, whatever you believe in. And then from there, it just has morphed over the years to where now I'm very lucky. I, I have some incredible clients that reach out to me for everything. Usually now it's, it's people that have their business established. They're making tons of money. But one part of their life, usually their relationship, their health, something else is not where they want it to be. And I'm usually their last call. They're like, I've been to a therapist. I've been to dietitians. I've been to marriage counselors. I've done this. You're the only guy that can help. So I love what I do, man. I'm very lucky. 
Awesome. So let me ask you this. The, the, the coaching world has kind of, let, let's say, has blown up in the last 10 years. Let's say maybe 15 years. This whole idea of, of an individual person that, that, that's going to, you know, help you, you know, whether it be light balance or accomplish a, a, a long, a goal that you've had for a long time. It's a relatively, it's a relatively new industry, but it's not a new science, right? Would you agree that you know, the ideas behind personal achievement have been around for a long, long time? What, what are some of the things that you think are either misconceptions or your, where you have a unique take on the science of personal achievement? Is there anything that, you know, kind of you've uncovered over the last 10 years that you think is, is something you didn't read somewhere? Yeah, that's such a cool question. I, I have a friend of mine who we, she has a coaching company, but it's all nutrition. Uh, I'll give her a shout out, Susie DeBias, RCA Nutrition. She is the best of the best, but her company, she calls herself a bio nutrition, bio individual and nutritionist. So it's not just one size fits all. You know, she, she will know everybody's different. So the first thing that, that I've learned to do, and unfortunately I've had some really shitty unqualified coaches coaching me over the years. And there's a lot of unqualified coaches out there, just like, you know, everything, unfortunately, but everybody's a light coach today. You know, they go, I, I had a, somebody call me and they said, I'm getting my certification from X, Y, Z Institute. And I'm like, that's great. It's not going to do anything for you. What you want to do right now is book a hundred free coaching sessions. Just start giving away coaching sessions. So what I do is I start with a behavioral assessment. I get their Enneagram type. If you're not familiar with the Enneagram, it's the most ancient typing system for human beings. And over time, what I will do is uncover what their true calling is, like what, what they're literally willing to die for. And there is, you know, the science is watching physiology. So just because I've done probably close to 20,000 coaching or recruiting sessions now, like Joe, like tell me about your kids. They're, they're, I got five of them and they're, they're pretty nuts, man. They're, they're amazing. So this, I'm oversimplifying this, right? But when I asked you that question, everything changed. You lit up, your eyes changed, you smile. Oh. Could see you were like breathing, relaxed. So if I were to ask an agent, is money the most important thing to you? And they go, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Or a human being, you know? So I watch for those signs. And then that's, I, I was saying, it's already inside them. That's the science. Like it's already inside them. But with that, hydration, their diet, their exercise, their love language with their spouse. How's that going? I, I mean, I have a list of that I go over with all of my trainings so on a scale of one to 10. Where are you in this area, that area, this area, the big, the big area is self-image. Most human beings don't love themselves. They've been conditioned to just go and grind and it's, it, it, that's the fun part for me. I can sit down with anybody and go, all right, I can help you make 200 grand selling real estate in Chester, Delaware County, working 30 hours. Would you like to do that? Great. Cool. Let's start with your mindset. Let's go over the numbers. Let's go over your personal strategy and accountability. That's the reason why we, we helped on social media. I just closed a hundred units this year. I just made a billion dollars. Why do we do that? Because it's the easiest thing to do, right? The hard thing to do is to make sure. So high power guys like yourselves, my question to guys like you is always, is your family getting the best of you or the rest of you at the end of the day? You that's know? the tough, that, that's, that's I mean, the toughest part about, I think most people that are in business, most people that are in in any business, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're in sales, where it's not a nine to five, where it's not, you know, you know, the harder you work, 
typically the more you make, or at least that's the misconception, the harder you work, the more you make. So now it's like, okay, if that's my connection, then all I have to do is work harder. All I have to do is work longer. All I have to do, and you're right. And your family gets the rest of you when, when, when you literally can't work another hour, you stop and you're exhausted, right? That's a challenge, man. That's, that's really, really tough to overcome. And by the way, I'm guilty of all this shit. And that's one Mm -hmm. of the blessings of getting a little bit older and going through it is, you know, I can look back and go, you know, I remember, I remember Christmas 2005. I had 12 settlements between Christmas and New Year's. And my little babies are opening up their presents. And my, uh, I remember my eyes looking up going, did I do a reply to inspection for 1403 Pine Rock? 22 Waterview. Shit, did I, did I get the second deposit in? And I looked at my three little kids and I thought, this is horrible, man. Like, yeah, uh, I'm going to make a hundred grand in a month, but I'm not, I'm not present. Not present, man. That's, that's hard. So yeah, what's the first thing? How do, how do you fix that? Cause I am. Yeah. What's the, so, so you're talking. So you did, I, I would say that the other thing that I've noticed as things progress and so forth, and I, I've had kind of a, a change of lifestyle in the past year. So I quit Jay and start working out. So, you know, training, fighting, all that. And, uh, I just, I've turned into, I don't have any time for anybody. Like if it's if people will come up and start having conversations with me and I'm just like, all right, man, I'm not about the bullshit right now. I just, and it's hard because then I'll walk away and I'll be like, I don't even know what that guy just said. I'm not even, you know, so how do you, how do you stay present in those conversations when you're just so laser focused on what you're doing? Yeah. So. There's a, you don't even have to read the book. You can just Google. The thing that motivates me is the five regrets of the dying. The five regrets of the dying? The five regrets of the dying. Yeah. And, you know, keep in mind everything that I've learned to do to help other, especially men, just because I'm a man, I, I, we get each other, is counterintuitive to what we are naturally from a million years ago, wired to do. We are wired to get up, go out, hunt, kill the deer, kill the elk, bring home, fight for our family, fight to the death, right? And that's, and that's still in our brain, but, but it's not, you know, it's not 1000 BC anymore. You know, it's 2023. So, Number one, it, it takes like anything practiced repetition. You know, we get addicted. You know, everything is brain chemicals. So I get that rush, man. The dopamine starts rushing. Everything starts rushing. I get high off of that. Right. What I like will, will tell, you know, men to do is or women, it doesn't matter when you pull up. In your driveway, you take that 30 seconds and it's like, like I'm even doing it now. It's like Superman going into the, and you literally just like, I meditate for 30 seconds, say a prayer that my mind is clear and that I'm 100% present and that I'm going to check back in maybe at nine o'clock at night after the kids are in bed. And I, I will, what always helped me was leaving the voicemail. This is it. This is the day I'm going to be in appointments or I'm going to be in family time. I'm going to get back to you at nine o'clock tonight or nine and 10 o'clock tonight. That way everybody's taken care of. I know now we have text and everything, but my, my family deserves that. And it's, it's not easy because I get it, man. We, you know, you've got how many kids, Joe, four? Five? I got five. Five of them. Five. And how many you carry? I have three. Yeah, you've got three. So I tell the young people at the gym, and this was like, this was like eight to 10 years ago. I used to tell them, hey, look, right now at Chester County, break even is 250, 300 grand a year. 
And that's if nothing goes wrong. Yep. Right. So I get it, man. Like, and that's just the reality. But what, what I learned to do is it, there's, oh, that the day the three of us expire, there's going to be shit that we didn't finish. And it's going to be okay. And, you know, I will, I will leverage when I, when I get one-on-one with a man, like basically, how would you like it? How would you like it if, you know, your father, and maybe your father did come in and just be grumpy, hi, grab a beer, go to the computer. Like, how would you like if, you know, if that was happening to you? So, you know, it's, and it's a family thing. So the communication is the important thing. I know I'm rambling here, but. Like, this is awesome. Dude. Not on. Like, I mean, the communication I, thing is sitting down, number one, with your, with your, 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 uh, since I'm talking to men here, your wife, number one, finding out her love language. There's a book called The Five Love Languages. If you can, if you like it, book with the letter five, number five in them, don't you? Yeah. How about, yeah. How about with that? Wow. This is the key. When you find out what your spouse's love language is and you can execute that. And the only way to execute it is by asking them, what's your love language and how can I show that? And letting them know what your love language is. That way we get a free pass. See, we think, we think, and some women are like this, but we think, oh shit, I just go buy the big diamond. I'll buy the shore house. I'll buy the Mercedes. I'll buy the whatever it is. And she'll be good. If that's her love language, that's cool. But more than likely, it's not. So when we can execute that love language every day or every other day, then we're good. Then, then we're cool. Right? And same with there. But sitting down and telling our kids, hey, this is what, this is what daddy does. So Number one, I want you to learn from me. I want you to learn intensely, work ethic, shin. I love what I do. I want you to love what you do. So if there's times that I come in and I ignore you, it's not because I don't love you. And by the way, Eddie, Johnny, Helen, you can tell me. You can tell me you need me. You are, you three are the most important souls on planet Earth. You can tell me if you need me. And I will drop whatever I'm doing. I was at a wrestling meet once and my, I think it was my Blackberry went off, right? And this took a big shot, you know, mega agent. I think I was even wearing a suit, right? I was all dooted up and I'm looking at it. And my son Johnny's on the wrestling mat. I turned to Eddie and I said, dude, you see this? If I'm ever at a family event and you see me pull this out, Eddie was probably like 12 at the time. I said, have you ever seen me pull this out? I want you to punch me right in the face and I won't do anything. So well, it's I, a decision, it's communication, it's letting your kids into your world. Letting the, the best thing to do is letting our kids know we're not perfect. Yeah, we're not perfect. And the funny we use that analogy because I, I, when, I'm, when I'm done eating, I usually go, listen, I can't eat another thing. And I tell my kids, if you see me eat one more thing, I want you to punch me in the face. And it makes yeah. my punch really upset. <laughs> Like, no, it's like an ongoing joke. So, so the love language is words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. That is absolutely huge. I, I'm glad you touched on that. For anybody listening, definitely go get that book because, you know, it's not just with your spouse, too. I mean, there's the, the, the love languages can be applied to your employees, to your coworkers, to the other people that are important to you in your life. You know, even if you have a coworker or an employee that, well, physical touch is out when we're talking about employees, just so very clear. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's encouraged, but it's it's real. Real. But, yeah, but, but some some people are like, oh, you know, I'm 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 always there for this person, but maybe their maybe their their love language is words of affirmation, not encouraging them enough. Being there. It's great. You think you're doing what's right, but you're not encouraging them enough. And therefore you're not speaking their language. So that stuff can be applied across, you know, across a lot of mediums, you know? Yeah. Uh, Speaking of, I would, I did some work a few years ago in Northeast Philly, right? Right off the Roosevelt Boulevard, man. Right. In the, I guess it was called like the Mayfair section. And we had a great agent, Giovanni Carpino. 
like, do I need to work Northeast Philly, Philly, Ivano Carpino, right? I took a post-it. This is what, this is what we don't understand about our agents, our employees, our staff people. I just wrote on that post-it, Hey, Giovanni, I think you're a rock star and I always got your back. This badass of a man's human being came in holding that post-it note with tears in his eyes. He said, no one ever told me they had my back. Wow. Right. So it's like those kinds of things, man, you're right, Ken. Like that's the love language, right? We don't, it's not always about money. In fact, rare money plays a big role in it. But man, knowing there's three things I learned from doing, speaking of certifications, my John Maxwell certification. There's three things our teams, our people, our, our, our clients need to, to know and feel. They need to know that we care about them, that we can help them, and that they can trust us. Care, help, trust. We get that. I'm going to shift gears, and I know we're, we're kind of close on time, but I wanted to ask you this question. I've asked this question of a number of people, and I love the answers that, that I get are very different, but it's, it's one of my internal struggles is how do you reconcile gratitude with complacency when it comes to what you want to get out of life? I think that, you know, you're either grateful for what you have, but if you're grateful for what you have... Can you still strive for more? Can you still want more? And if you do want more, are you truly grateful for what you have? You know, what are your thoughts on that? I know this is that you didn't prepare this answer. So, but just curious what your thoughts are. I get it. It's very simple. Happy, not satisfied. Happy, not satisfied. All right. So you can um, be both. Yeah, you can, you can be both. In fact, one will lead to the other. Yeah. Complacency, you know, uh, I'll, there is, there's something out there now that I'm calling the, the disease of more. And it's, you're hitting this point right now where the primal needs of every human being is to feel like we're making progress and growing. So we have to have that. If we don't have that, life is not going to be fun. But we have to celebrate our victories. Right. We have to celebrate our victories. And then I would say, you know, for the circles that we run in and, and the lives that we can impact, it has to be like, I was really grateful that I got my health in order and, and took it to a level where, you know, I was rock and rolling, man. The truth was I was overweight. So I dropped a bunch of weight and then I, but I was still addicted to sugar. And now that I've broken that sugar addiction, now, you know, my last checkup was crazy, man. Like I'm literally at the, at the weight I was when I was, I, I'll use the years, right? The same weight that I was in 1987. Well, just a couple of years out of high school, but with everything like, and that's why I go down like through the, it has to be measured your, your job or your business, your wealth, your intimate relationships, your self image, your health, the, the, the fuel that you're putting in your body, like measuring all of that and knowing that now, nah, man, like complacency, there, there is no such thing. And that doesn't mean like, that doesn't mean that we, constantly have to be grinding and working 12 hours a day. In fact, I, I would highly recommend doing the act exact opposite, but I know there's some people that, you know, they'll hit a certain level of business and income and security, right? But then now they're going and they're like my coach, which by the way, I have the best coach in the world. His name is Jason Morris. He, he coaches real estate agents, but he's, he's more of just like an incredible friend to me that, that pulls greatness out of me, that makes sure that I'm sticking to my calling. So when he asked me, all right, Ed, so when you have the four and a half million dollars in your Vanguard account, and this is going on, that's going on, what are you going to do? Without hesitation, I said, I'm going to go kill bad people that hurt little kids. 
he knows like, Ken, you probably know my, 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 and we won't go down that rabbit hole, but with human trafficking and child sex trafficking, it's something that God's put in front of me. And you know what, guys, I get to look at the most beautiful, incredible human being ever. <laughs> and wow, it, you know, is this, is it G rated this? Because <laughs> I mean, like, they do that to me for like months now. And I'm so proud of you. Now, selling the sunshine reality, man. Look it up. I have the most beautiful human being in my life who I'll marry. I might marry her tonight. But that is an incredible. We're first up to Valentine's Day. <laughs> and the Brattle, the best former <laughs> builder, smart, beautiful, sexy, you name it. And I've just completely lost my track of thought. So I. And I, I got to tell you, man, this, this went really way faster than I anticipated because we just so much, so much knowledge and intuition and, and it just, just flowing. And I, we didn't ask a whole lot of questions, but that's a testament to your ability to just kind of you know, bring it. So I, I appreciate it very, very much. As we wrap up here, we'll put, I, I didn't get a chance to really talk about this, but I do want to put some stuff in our description about you know your coaching and and where people can find you if they need joe what are your final thoughts here man take us away i just i like being a sponge man every day you touched on so many things that are so pertinent like to just to me personally too and you know i, I think that you get to a point in life and i know for me i was like i'm doing the world a disservice by not taking checking all these boxes of being better physically fit, better mentally, a better dad, a better husband. So, you know, taking that first step, even if it's just, you know, one of those things I've, I've seen, you know, in the past year or so it's, it's impactful. And so, you know, we're fortunate enough to know Ed and if anybody is listening and, you know, looking to better themselves, absolutely great first step. So thanks for having, or thanks for being with us, Ed. I mean, I'm, I'm a sponge over here. Everything you said just yeah. really rang true. Cool, man. Well, we appreciate it very much. If if you, I guess if, if anybody wants to, to get more information, don't forget to look in the description. Otherwise, we will catch you on the next podcast and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk, man. See everybody later. See you guys.